Let's ask ourselves how many of us we do good deeds. We fulfill our prayers. Mashallah, five prayers a day. Some of us even more. You know, that which is voluntary as well. And mashallah, we dress appropriately. We have so much of goodness. We're getting closer to Allah. We fast and so on. And we start thinking to ourselves, Alhamdulillah, you know, mashallah, I, I, I'm thankful to Allah that Allah's made me, uh, you know, read five salah in the first saf, I read it with jama'ah, or oh, I fulfill my, I read Quran every day, I read so much of Quran. But you know what? At home, the way you speak to your wife or your husband is so nasty that as you come out of the masjid having read that salah, you come into the home with a leaking bucket. That salah went straight through the bucket. What happened? You came home and you just said one bad word. You hurt the heart of those whom you live with. Your bucket is leaking. You've just thrown the good deed away. You have to have a package. When you put your deeds into a bucket, make sure that there's no hole with a leak that you're losing the deeds. Many of us speak to our children in a way that we abuse them. Wallahi, we abuse them, not realizing that Allah is watching. Allah knows. I've come across cases where mothers use a statement of Muhammad to blackmail their children. And parents do the same sometimes. They use a statement to blackmail. Yes, your status is known. You know, we say, serve your parents, serve your mother, you will earn Jannatul Firdaus. Don't you hear that? You will earn paradise by serving your mother or by serving your parents. You need to be kinder to your mother than your father. Do you agree? No one's agreeing. You need to be kinder to your mother than your father. Do you agree? MashaAllah. That's a hadith. Kindness. Who is more deserving of my kindness? He says, your mother. Who next? He says, your mother. Who next? He says, your mother. This was the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. The fourth time, who next? He says, dad, by the way. Your father. <laughs> Subhanallah. Subhanallah. That is kindness. So, People say, your paradise is under my feet. You will do as I say. Huh? Come on, come on. That's not what the Prophet said. He didn't say that you can use that statement to blackmail your kids. I know of a case and many cases where parents say, you know what? After Allah, you're supposed to obey your parents. And we are telling you, you're not going to get married there. You're going to get married where we say, because we are your parents. That's blackmail, total blackmail. Haram, not allowed. You cannot use that statement to impose on your child what you believe that you should impose when Allah gave them a choice in that regard. I hope you get what I'm saying. People are doing this. And a lot of young boys and girls complain about their folks. And I think to myself, but these are pious people. These people read the Quran. These people are half it. They've memorized the Quran. These people read Salah. These people do good deeds. And look at them. They are so filthy in their relationships with their own who live in the same house. We're ugly. And the other way as well, sometimes you have a son or a daughter very pious, mashallah. They're really trying hard and mashallah, reading Quran and doing this and doing. And they speak to their parents like, subhanallah, they wouldn't even speak to anyone else. Mom, who's mom? Mom, come here. Hey, take it easy. Subhanallah, you don't ever speak to your parents disrespectfully. There is no excuse. You might disagree with them, but respectfully. Allah says, if your parents, one or both of them, arrive at old age in your presence, you need to know what to do. You don't ever utter oof to them. Ugh! And that's a bad expression, let alone a bad statement. Respect them. I could disagree with my parents, but I can disagree in a respectful manner, no matter who they are. I've had people come to me, no, but my mother's not a Muslim. If your mother's not a Muslim, go out of your way to make sure that you respect her, you honor her, you fulfill her rights. Why not? You have to. It's irrelevant what faith you belong to. Those are your parents. 
Those are your parents. The only time you excuse yourself is when they're asking you to do something that is haram. They're asking you to do something that you really are not allowed to do. Then you can politely excuse yourself. And you need to master the art of being polite. Because that is part of your paradise. Being polite. Be good to people.